Hey, what's up everybody, this is Ray. In this screencast, I'm going to show you how you can persist your model objects in a database using a popular server-side Swift framework called Perfect and its ORM layer called STORM or Storm. Storm is a modular ORM for Swift layered on top of Perfect. Basically, its goal is to make it easy to store and retrieve your objects from a database in a manner that's independent of what database engine you're actually using. Storm comes with implementations for CouchDB, MySQL, Postgres, and SQLite. In this screencast, we're going to use Postgres because it's popular, easy to set up, and it's what I've covered in other server-side Swift videos. If you want to use a different database provider, don't worry. You can take what you learn here and apply it to any database provider you want. You only have to change about three lines of code. This screencast has been sponsored by Perfectly Soft, so thanks to them for sponsoring, and let's dive right in. The first thing you need to do is install PostgreSQL on your local machine. I found the best way to do this is with Brew, which you can install by going to brew.sh and following the instructions. Once you've installed Brew, run Brew Update, then run Brew Install LibXML2. This isn't exactly related to Postgres, but it is a dependency that Perfect requires. And Brew Install Postgres. I've already done this, so I see a warning at this point. After it completes, run brew services start PostgreSQL to start the database server. Again, I've already seen this, so I see a warning. Next, we need to create a test user and database for app to use. To do this, I'll run the create user command, passing in dash D to specify this user cannot create databases, dash P to specify that it will need a password, and perfect as the username. I'll also enter perfect as the password. Then I'll create a database with create DB, passing in dash O to specify that the owner of the database will be the perfect user we just created and enter perfect testing as the name of the database. Finally, enter PSQL to open the command line interface for PostgreSQL using dash D to specify perfect testing as the database and dash U to specify perfect as the user. If it runs, that verifies that everything is working okay, so we can quit with slash Q. By the way, this user and database combination we created here is actually frequently used in various perfect examples. So now that you've set this up, it'll be a lot easier for you to try them out later. Now that we have our database set up, we'll create a new perfect project to store a simple model object into a database. Storm makes this really simple. All we have to do is take our model object and derive from the appropriate class based on our database provider, which in this case is Postgres Storm. By doing so, we're required to write a few methods, such as one that returns the name of the database table to store the object in, and one that takes a row of data and creates an object based on that row of data. Once we've done that, that's all the hard work. Then Storm has built-in methods like find all or save and so on that we can use to do common database operations. The easiest way to understand this is to see it in action, so let's dive right in. I've already got the Swift 3 toolchain and Perfect Assistant installed, so I'll create a new project in Perfect Assistant using the Perfect Template app template. I'll browse to a directory to store this project in and create a new directory called TIL because that is the name of the app we're eventually making. And I'll uncheck Integrate Linux Builds to save compile time and I'll click Save. Perfect Assistant will now set up a Hello Perfect project for me. Before I open the project, I need to do two configuration things. First, I'll open up Terminal and create a new file that we'll be creating our model object in, called acronym.swift. Then, back in Perfect Assistant, I'll drag Postgres Storm up into the dependencies list and click Save Changes. This will auto-regenerate the Xcode project, so at this point, I can just click Open Xcode Project. Let's start by making our acronym model object. We'll import Storm and Postgres Storm and mark our model object as driving from Postgres Storm. Our acronym will have three properties. One, its unique ID in the database. Second, the short form of the acronym, like BRB. And third, the long form of the acronym, like be right back. The first method we're required to implement is called table. Here, we simply return the name of the database table that corresponds to this model object. We'll call it acronyms. The second method we're required to implement is two. Here, you receive a row of data from the database, and you have to set each of your properties accordingly. I'll just look in the data directory for each field and set the property accordingly, casting if necessary. The next method I need to add isn't strictly required, but it's quite handy, so I'm going to add it. Basically, often you need to run methods on Storm like find all that run a query on the database and populate self.results with an array of result rows. Often you want to easily convert this into an array of model objects. So I'll add a method to do this. It just loops through the results, creates an acronym for each, and returns the result. We'll use this method later in the screencast. Next, I'm going to make a method to return this model as a string to any dictionary. 
This isn't required, but it makes it easy to return your data in JSON format later on or pass it as a parameter to a template. Back in main.swift, I'll delete the template code and start with some basic setup to create a server listening on port 8080. Next, I'll import storm and postgres storm and configure the database with the test user and database we set up earlier. Next, I need to create the database table for acronyms. Luckily, with storm, this is easy. I simply create an instance of the acronym class and call setup. Behind the scenes, storm will create the database structure when this line is run. Let's test this out to prove that it works so far. I'll run the project and then log into PSQL with our test user. Cool, I can see our database is set up. Back in main.swift, I'll add a new route for when you issue a get to slash test. Then I'll implement the handler. It will start by creating a new acronym and saving it to the database. Again, Storm makes this simple. I simply create an acronym and set the properties the way I like. Then I can call acronym.save. Upon success, this calls a closure with the ID of the new object in the database. I'll just set the ID back on the acronym object. The second thing I want to do in this handler is return a list of all the acronyms in the database in JSON format. To do this, I can use Storm's findAll method. I simply create a temporary acronym object that is used just for retrieval and call findAll to retrieve all acronyms from the database. I then create an empty array of string to any dictionaries to collect the acronyms into a format that can easily be converted into JSON. Then, I use the rows method that I wrote earlier to convert the rows into an array of acronyms and loop through each, calling row.asDictionary method that we wrote earlier. Finally, I set the body of the response to a JSON version of the acronyms array. I set the header to application JSON and set it to completed as usual. If there's any error, I'll send a diagnostic message. Now I'll build and run and navigate to localhost 8080 slash test. I see that it's created an entry into the database, and if I refresh, it creates another. Let's try creating an entry in the database manually, just to prove it works another way. I'll log in with PSQL and create an entry for BRB. Now if I refresh the page, I see it. All right, that's everything I'd like to cover in this screencast. At this point, you should understand how to persist your objects into a database using Perfect and Storm. There's a lot more you can do besides just saving an object to a database. You can also query the database, delete data from the database, and more, and that's the subject of my next screencast. Speaking of models, do you know how to scare a model on Instagram? You just say, I know what you wore last summer. All right, I'm out. Thank you.